Even the most seasoned scientists have to admit that they have that little kid inside of them who really loves dinosaurs for their legendary size. And yes, the 9-ton theropods are impressive, and who doesn't love a ceratops scene bigger than a semi-truck? But any self-respecting six-year-old knows that when it comes to ginormity, sauropods are the top of the dinosaur world. And the bottom. They're so big they fill the space in between. But how did they reach such colossal forms? A number of experts have recently published studies on the subject, the most revolutionary of which being Fronimos and Wilson 2017. Basically, John Fronimos was museum-watching in Spain and found a display of Spinophorosaurus, a 13-meter sauropod likely from the Jurassic period. He examined its vertebrae and found huge zigzag-shaped lines above where the spinal cord would have been. In their February 2017 paper, Fronimos and Wilson describe how these lines are results of the backbones fusing together in tooth-like patterns to increase the surface area of contact between the bones. This means that the same amount of force is distributed over a larger area, reducing the stress any one point. Matt Weidel of SV Powell, one of the sauropod experts who discovered the 100-plus ton Barosaurus in October 2016, compares the zigzags to treads that massively increase the strength and durability of the bones. And the more complex the zigzags are, the more weight they can bear. They're simple close to the head, and are the most complicated close to the shoulders, where all the weight of the neck is being held. The folks at SV Powell also have a contribution to the topic of sauropod gigantism. Mike Taylor, for example, discusses how sauropods could have necks composed of up to 60% air by volume, and how the tendons and muscles were arranged in a manner to provide the most leverage possible in crucial points like the shoulders. He also suggests in the journal Pier J that the air sacs of sauropods compensated for how long it took for oxygen to travel through the throats of the titanic beasts. But what about food? With such tiny heads, how could any sauropod ingest enough plant material to maintain their mass? Dr. P. Martin Sander of the University of Bonn writes in his book Biology of the Sauropod Dinosaurs that sauropods saved time and energy by not chewing their food. They were incapable of it, actually. Their jaws couldn't move the right way. So the incredible amounts of microorganisms in the vast fermentation chamber of the stomach did a great deal of the digestive work, possibly along with gastrolytes. Sanders' team also analyzed the likely circulatory system of Brachiosaurus and figured that its heart would have weighed at least 200 kilograms to pump enough blood to its brain, which rested a dizzying 40 feet in the air. So, to summarize, at least some sauropods had complex vertebral fusions, their bones were strategically air-filled, their muscles, tendons, and ligaments were masters of leverage, and sauropods' organs were massive and effective. These are some of the primary reasons behind the 80-ton Argentinosaurus from South America, the 100 or more ton Barosaurus from North America, and fragmentary or lost species like Bruhathchaeosaurus or Amphicelius. This quote from S.V. Powell's Michael Taylor sums up sauropod size pretty well. Extinct animals, and living animals too for that matter, are much more amazing than we realize. Time and again, people have proposed limits to possible animal sizes, like the 5-meter wingspan that was supposed to be the limit for flying animals, and time and again, they've been blown away. These extremes are achieved by a startling array of anatomical innovations. So there could be a 60-meter, 200-ton what the heck lying in the desert somewhere. Who knows? You might be the one to find it. Created using Powtoon.